Methods and effects of training. There are numbers of different ways of training that can improve health and fitness necessary for a range of activities. Warming up and cooling down are essential parts of a training session. This video will talk through the importance of warming up and cooling down and also will talk through different training methods such as continuous training and circuit training. Effects of a warm up and cool down. Training should be considered to be a very deliberate and controlled process, following precise guidelines. One of those guidelines is that every session starts with a warm up and ends with a cool down. Specific training methods are used to bring about specific outcomes, and even the timing and order of when each training method can be planned to the finest detail. This will be used in your NEA. Warm up. Each training session and competitive performance should begin with a warm up to ensure that the performer is physically and mentally prepared for action. A warm up can take from 10 minutes to an hour. A warm up starts with a pulse raising activities such as an easy jog, or cycling or anything that gently raises the heart rate. Next comes mobility exercises for the joints, such as arm circling for shoulders, skipping for ankles, knee and pelvis swivels for the hips. Stretching comes next and stretches should be dynamic, moving not held. For a warm up such as high knees to stretch hamstrings, heel flicks to stretch quadriceps, side steps to stretch the groins. This leads into large dynamic movements such as lunges, agility ladder exercises, step foot patterns, and fast feet, gradually increasing in intensity and speed. Physical warm ups usually finish with skill rehearsals, which means practicing the techniques used in the game. Netballers would perform passing drills and shooting or rebounding drills while tennis players hit specific shots and serve repeatedly. The illustration shows the three primary components of an effective warm up. First, the pulse raising activity. The pulse raiser will increase deep muscle temperature, loosen joints and increase respiratory and cardiac rates. Stroke volume increases, allowing for greater oxygen delivery to the muscles that will work during the performance. Stretches and mobility exercises. Stretches and mobility exercises increase the range of motion at the joints, increase the extensibility of the muscles and helps to reduce the risk of soft tissue injuries such as sprains and strains. Sports specific activities. Now I've gone over this here but if you actually look sports is where you actually do some relating, such as a tennis player practicing their serve, a cricketer practicing catching, a skill which is going to be performed in the game in order to pr improve your coordination. A cool down. Each training session and competitive performance should end with a cool down to allow the body to recover more effectively and minimize uh, any discomfort or injury. Cool down starts with low intensity exercise such as light jogging, medium pace walking or easy cycling. Anything that allows the heart rate to maintain an increase rate then gradually decreases. This is followed by stretching which is usually more static. This, the major muscle groups used in the activity should be stretched. 
The illustration shows the three primary components of an effective cooldown. The light jog. Light aerobic work allows the respiratory and cardiac levels to reduce gradually. Core muscle temperature is maintained while capillaries are flushed with oxygen, oxygenated blood. Lactic acid and other toxins are removed from worked muscles more effectively. Stretching. Stretches within the muscle can typically be held for 30 seconds. As the muscle stretches, blood flow is increased, allowing for faster recovery. Muscles are better prepared for the next training session and soreness and pain uh, experience after training is reduced. Refueling. So we talked about this in the diet and nutrition uh, video where after exercise, you need to replenish your carbohydrates in order to aid your recovery. Physical benefits of a cool down. Remove Removal of waste products, including lactic acid. Circulation of blood and oxygen. Normal length of muscles, what's reduced. Risk of muscle soreness and stiffness. Heart rate, breathing rate, temperature. So if you look, these go down. These stay the same and these go up. Methods of training. Specific training methods are used to bring about specific outcomes and even the timing and order of when to use each training method can be planned to the finest detail. All methods of training need to be specific to the individual performer, components of fitness and activity. Continuous training develops cardiovascular fitness. A minimum of 20 minutes. Target heart rate should be between 60 to 80% of your maximum. Good activities are swimming, running, cycling. A distance runner or triathlete would use continuous training. So continuous training is doing swimming, running, walking continuously without stopping. Fartlet training. Fartlet training develops a range of components and is used by game players. Fartlet means speed play. It's a form of continuous training. Changes in speed, incline or terrain are used to provide changes in exercise intensity. Aerobic and anaerobic work can be done in the quantities that suit the performer and it is more varied that con uh, than continuous training. Footballers, tennis and hockey players would use fartlet training. I often talk about if you have a football pitch where you might jog this part, sprint this part, jog this part, sprint this part. So you're actually running around, but you're changing your speeds to, uh, in order to improve your fitness. Interval training. Interval training can develop strength, speed, muscle endurance and cardiovascular endurance. Periods of work are interspread with periods of rest. A wide variety of fitness types can be developed. Structured by planning the duration of the work and rest intervals, the intensity of the work intervals and the number of work rest intervals. Now for me, I always see interval training as you work hard for a period, you then stop and you rest. You then work hard for a period, you stop and you rest. So you're doing intervals of work and having intervals of rest. Okay. Circuit training. Circuit training can develop strength, speed, agility, muscle endurance or cardiovascular stamina. A form of interval training. A series of exercises or activities arranged in a special order called a circuit. A circuit usually involves 9 to 10 exercises performed at stations. 
The exercises work different muscle groups and the circuit usually avoids working the same muscle groups in two consecutive stations. Examples of circuit exercise are sit-ups, then press-ups, squats, lunges and step-ups. Now just to go back to this point here, that an exam question asks for a circuit to target the legs. And if an exam question asks you to target a specific area of the body, you then have to maybe put three leg exercises in a row. You do not vary the type of body uh, it hits. Weight training. Weight training develops strength and muscle endurance, a form of interval training. Intensity is measured in the percentage of the most weight a person can lift one time is known as 1% 1, one rep max. So it's lifting, that is one rep max, is lifted as much as you can. Time is structured in reps and sets with specific timing for recovery between sets. So it may be that you might lift a weight uh, five times, have a rest, then lift a weight five times, have a rest, lift the weight five times. So you are doing a certain amount of reps, a certain amount of sets, and you're having a break in between each one. Okay, there are many different ways you can do weight training and you can target every muscle in your body. Plyometric training. Okay, plyometric training, if you think of bounding, hopping, and jumping. Okay, it's when you're jumping onto a box, you're looking at really that explosive power of that initial movement of jumping onto a box or hopping up steps. You're training your muscles to be more explosive. So you're developing power, that explosive movements. HIT training, high intensity interval training. Now, with this, we said interval training was working hard, having a break working hard. Now high intensity is we make this break smaller. So we work as hard as we can, short break, work as hard as we can, short break, work as hard as we can, short break. So the intensity is a lot harder, we work a lot harder, and but we have a lot shorter rests. You can carry on reading these slides, you want to pause the video to go through it even more. Here are some exam questions, have a go and we'll see how you do in class.